There are nine unique pieces of armor scattered throughout the unmoored world of Dragon's Dogma 2, all of which will be covered in this guide. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. Two quick warnings before starting. First, bring wakestones along with you and use them if you die in the open world. A game over in the unmoored world can potentially result in hours of lost progress and so should be avoided at all costs. Also, if you haven't already cleared the three initial light pillars in the unmoored world and returned to Talos to complete the When Wills Collide quest, then I highly suggest doing that first, as it will stall the progression of the encroaching fog so that you can take long rests when needed. Just be sure not to interact with the final pillar of light that appears within Seafloor Shrine, as doing so will progress you to New Game Plus. In any case, closing the portal near Vernworth will also lead us to our first piece of armor. Starting at the city's north exit, we will move west down into the dried up riverbed. We can then continue moving south towards the Vernworth southern ruins. If we haven't already done so, we can interact with the pillar of light there and overcome the resulting battle. Afterwards, we'll move through the southeast passage of the ruins to find the summoner's crown in a chest. The second armor piece is the Hood of Darkness. This armor can be found near the Nameless Village. If you follow the road that leads east out of the village, there should be a path of descending rocks to follow down to a chest in a pit where the Hood of Darkness is found. Next is the Predator's Maw. To get it, make your way to the Mountain Ruins, which is a short distance southeast of the Sacred Arbor. On the east edge of the ruins, there should be a short drop leading down to a chest with this helmet. We can follow the main roads from here further east to the marshland settlement for the third piece of armor. With all of the water gone, we can move into the nearby lake where a hidden passageway has been revealed. When entering the room with an undead knight, head left to find the Conqueror's Sabatons in a chest. Moving on, we're going to get the Agamenian Galia. For this helm, we'll go along the main road that leads to Checkpoint Rest Town until reaching the bottom of this bend. This should bring us safely to the large dried up riverbed. From there, we just need to move west towards the other end of the river, clambering our way up as we go. Once we get past the white and reach the west end of the riverbed, we'll go into a small cave where the Agamenian Galia can be found. For this next piece of armor, we'll go to the northern entrance of Guerco Cavern.
Moving south through the cave, we will eventually emerge on a cliffside. We'll then want to make our way down it past a forgotten riftstone. A short distance to the southeast, there should be a drake guarding a chest. Inside the chest is the armor piece we're after, the Vanguarder's Greaves. The next two armor pieces are both close to the Agamemnon Volcanic Island port crystal that is unearthed in the unmoored world. For the first, we'll just head a very short distance east and drop down into the seafloor. A chest containing the monarch's crown should be found near the southern end of this area. For the 8th armor piece, we'll continue moving east from the volcanic island port crystal until we reach this large circular formation. The chest here can be a little difficult to spot, but if you walk along the northern edge of this area, you should find a chest containing the assassin's breeches tucked behind a small ledge. The final armor piece is a little bit tricky. To get it, we'll need to head a fair distance south from the checkpoint rest town or west from Bakbatal. We should eventually reach a minor road on the west side of Batal that will lead us towards the Riftstone of Agility. Moving past the Riftstone, we can then go further south along the dried up riverbed. There should be an undead knight standing guard, which I've already defeated, and once he's been dealt with, we are free to grab the Promethean Hood from the nearby chest. Now, I should have a complete guide for everything to do in the Unmoored world soon, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments where I'll do my best to help. If you want to see more great content, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day if you're here today, have a great Friday, and a great weekend, and as always, thanks for watching.